Hello. Welcome to the Archie Burnett Studio Theater, and we thank you for coming out today. My name is Brendan Peacock, and I am the director of today's performance. Uh, what you're about to see is a play that has been in the works for six months, and all of this was designed, organized, and crafted by students in the School of Theater and Dance. As you will see, they are highly talented, hardworking theater makers, and I would just like to say thank you to every one of them. Without their hard work and dedication, we wouldn't be here today. Now, before we begin, I'd like to note some things that you all need to be aware of. Night Mother, which won the 1983 Pulitzer Prize for Drama, is a tragic story about a mother and her daughter. This play contains conversations and some depiction of suicide. Due to the sensitive nature of this production, we ask you to please be silent and to put away all electronic devices. This is an intimate play. It's quiet and it's personal. And we thank you for your quiet attention throughout the performance. Photography and videography are not allowed, nor is texting or using any devices whatsoever. The production runs about 90 minutes with no intermission. If you need to leave for any reason, the exits are there, and right over there behind this flap here. Uh, if you do leave, please note that you will not be able to re-enter because we don't want to disturb the actors. Now, finally, Please keep in mind that this is a period piece originally written during and depicted, depicting the early 1980s. At that time, there was much less awareness and conversation around mental health and far fewer resources for those struggling with mental health. Thankfully today, we can talk much more openly about these issues and there are many more avenues for help and support for those suffering. I hope this production continues to raise awareness around suicide prevention and encourages us all to keep the conversation going and seek help that is readily available. Available. To that end, we partnered with ECU's Counseling Center. We provided our cast, crew, and our SOTD community with an informational lecture earlier this week. And you will find additional resources in the literature tucked inside your program. We thank you for coming out today, and we hope you enjoy the show. Woo. Sugar. I know, I got it on the schedule. You want me to wash my hands now? 
Or are you making your mess first? Oh, we're out of these. Did I say that already? There's more coming tomorrow. I ordered you a whole case. Whole case will go stale, Jesse. They can go in the freezer till you're ready for them. Where's Daddy's gun? In the attic. Where in the attic? I looked your whole nap and couldn't find it anywhere. One of those shoe boxes, I think. Full of shoes. I looked already. Well, you didn't look good enough then. There's that box from the ones he wore to the hospital. When he died, they said I could have them back, but <laughs> I never did like those shoes. I found the bullets. They were in an old milk can. Dawson took the shotgun, didn't he? Oh, hand me that basket, hon. Dawson better not have taken that pistol. And my glasses, please. I told him to take those rubber boots, too, but he said they were for fishing. I told him to take up fishing. He's just too lazy to climb up there, Mama. Hmm. Or maybe he's just being smart. That floor is not very steady. It's not a floor at all, hon. It's a board now and then. Measure this for me. I need six inches. Dawson could probably use some of those clothes up there. Somebody should have them. You ought to call the Salvation Army before the whole thing falls in on you. Six inches exactly. It's plenty safe, as long as you don't go up there. I'm careful. What do you want the gun for, Jess? Protection. <laughs> you take the TV way too serious, hon. I've never seen a criminal in my life. This is way too far to come for what's out here to steal. Never seen a one. Except for Ricky. Ricky's mixed up. That's not a crime. Get your hands washed. I'll be right back. And get it real dry. You dry your hands till I get back or it's no go, all right? I thought Dawson told you not to go up those stairs. He did. I don't like the idea of a gun, Jess. Which shoe box? Do you remember? Black. The box was black? The shoes were black. That doesn't help much, Mother. I'm not trying to help, sugar. <laughs> we don't have anything anybody wants, Jesse. I mean, I don't even want what we've got, Jesse. Neither do I. Wash your hands. You come down from there before you have a fit. I can't come up and get you, you know. I know. We'll just hand it over to them when they come. How's that? Whatever they want, the criminals. That's a good idea, Mom. Ricky will grow out of this and be a real fine boy, Jess. But I have to tell you, I wouldn't want him to know we have a gun in the house. Here it is. I found it. It's just something Ricky's going through. Maybe he's in with some bad people. He just needs some time, sugar. He'll get back in school or get a job or one day you'll get a call and he'll say he's sorry for all the trouble he's caused and invite you out for supper, someplace dress up. Don't worry, it's not for him, it's for me. Well, I didn't think you would shoot your own boy, Jesse. I know you felt like it. Well, we've all felt like shooting somebody, but we don't do it. Your hands aren't washed. Do you want a manicure or not? Yes, I do. Then but... wash your hands and don't talk to me anymore about Ricky. Those two rings he took were the last valuable things I had. So now he's starting in on other people door to door. I hope they put him away sometime. I'd turn him in myself if I knew where he was. You don't mean that. Every word. Wash your hands and that's the last time I'm telling you. I should have got you to bring down that milk can. Agnes Fletcher sold hers to somebody with a flea market for $40 a piece. I'll go back and get it in a minute. There's a wagon wheel up there too. There's even a churn. I'll get it all if you want. What are you doing? The barrel has to be clean, Mama. Old powder, dust gets in it. What for? I told you. And I told you, we don't get criminals out And here. I told you, the gun is for me. Well, you can have it if you want. When I die, you'll get it all anyway. Oh. I'm going to kill myself, Mama. <laughs> Very funny. Very funny. I am. You are not. Don't even say such a thing. How would you know if I didn't say it? You want it to be a surprise? You're lying there in your bed, or maybe just brushing your teeth, and 
You hear this noise down the hall? Kill yourself. Shoot myself in a couple of hours. It must be time for your medicine. Took it already. Then what's the matter with you? Not a thing. Feel fine. You feel fine. You're just going to kill yourself. Waited until I felt good enough, in fact. Don't make jokes, Jesse. I'm too old for jokes. It's not a joke, Mama. That gun's no good, you know. He broke it right before he died. He dropped it in the mud one day. Seems okay. I had Cecil's already in there, just in case I couldn't find this one. But I'd rather use Daddy's. Those bullets are at least 15 years old. These are from last week. Where did you get those? Seed store, Dawson told me about. Dawson. I told him I was worried about prowlers. He said he thought it was a good idea. He told me what kind to ask for. If he had any idea. He took it as a compliment. He thought I might be taking an interest in things. He got through telling me all about the bullets and then he said we ought to talk like this more often. And where was I when all this was going on? On the phone with Agnes. About the milk can, I guess. Anyway, I asked Dawson if he thought they'd send me some bullets, and he said he'd just call for me, because he knew they'd send them if he told them to. And he was absolutely right. Here they are. How could he do that? Just trying to help, Mom. And then I told you where the gun was. See? Everybody's doing what they can. You told me it was for protection. It is. I'm still doing your nails, though. Want to try that new china berry color? Well... I'm calling Dawson. We'll just see what he has to say about this little stunt. Dawson doesn't have any more to do with this. He's your brother. And that's all. Dawson will put a stop to this. Yes, he will. He'll take the gun away. If you call him, I'll just have to do it before he gets here. Soon as you walk, hang up the phone, I'll just walk in the bedroom and lock the door. You will not. This is crazy talk, Jesse. Dawson will get here just in time to help you clean up. Go ahead, call him. Then call the police. Then call the funeral home. Then call Loretta. See if she'll do your nails.
They'll probably test your hands for gun tiger anyway, but you'll pass. Not in my house. If I'd known you were going to act like this, I wouldn't have told you. How am I supposed to act? Tell you to go ahead? Okay by me, sugar. Might try it myself. What took you so long? There's just no point in fighting me over it, that's all. Get some coffee? Your birthday's coming up, Jesse. Don't you wanna know what we got you? You got me dusting powder. Loretta got me a new house coat, pink probably. And Dawson got me new slippers. Too small, but they go with the rope, he'll say. Right? Be back in a minute. To, but I didn't. I didn't call him. Good. Thank you. What's this all about, Jesse? About? What did I do? Nothing. Want to hear me? You're mad at me. Not at all. I am worried about you, but I'm going to do what I can before I go. We're not just going to sit around tonight. I made a list of things. What things? How the washer works, things like that. Did you grow up wearing dirty clothes? No. I know how the washer works. You put the clothes in, you put the soap in, you turn it on, you wait. You do something else. You don't just Whatever wait. else it is you find to do, you're still mainly waiting. The waiting's the worst part. The waiting is what you pay somebody else to do if you can. Okay. Where do we keep the soap? I can find it. See? <laughs> If you're mad about doing the wash, we could get Loretta to do it. <laughs> now that might be worth staying to see. She never in her life was she. No. What's the matter with her? She thinks she's better than we are. She's not. Maybe if she didn't wear that yellow all the time. The wash repair number is on a little card taped to the side of the machine. We don't ever have to see Loretta again. Dawson can just leave her at home when he comes. And she won't see Dawson again if he bothers you. Does he bother me? Sure he does. Be sure you clean out the lint tray every time you use the dryer. But don't ever put your house shoes in. It'll melt the soles. What does Dawson do that bothers you? He just calls me Jess like he knows who he's talking to. He's always wondering what I do all day. I mean, I wonder the same thing, but it's my day, so it's mine to wonder about, not his. Family's just an accident, Jesse. It's nothing personal, hon. They don't mean to get on your nerves. They don't even mean to be your family. They just are. They know too much. About what? They know things about you. And they learned it before you had a chance to say whether you wanted them to know it or not. They were there when it happened. And it don't belong to them. It belongs to you. But they got it. Like my mail order bra got delivered to their house. By accident. All the same. They opened it saw the little rosebuds on it. Chewy mint? What do they say about you? I'll tell them never to talk about it again. Is it Ricky or Cecil or your fits or your hair is falling out or you drink too much coffee or you never go out of the house or what? I just don't like their talk. The account of the groceries in Dawson's name when you call. The numbers on a whole list of numbers on the back cover of the phone book. Well, now we're getting somewhere. There are none of them ever setting foot in this house again. It's not them, Mother. I wouldn't kill myself just to get away from them. You leave the room when they come over anyway. I stay as long as I can. Besides, it's you they come to see. That's because I stay in the room when they come. It's not them. Then what is it? Are you sick? If your gums are swelling, we can get you to the dentist in the morning. You count the groceries up. The grocery won't deliver on Saturday anymore. And if you want your order the same day, you have to call before 10. And they won't deliver less than $15 worth. 
What I do is tell them what we need and tell them to add on cigarettes till it gets to $15. Your eyes don't look right. I thought so yesterday. That's just the rad need. I'm not sick. Epilepsy is sick, Jesse. It won't kill me. If it would, I wouldn't have to. You don't have to! No, I don't. That's what I like about it. Jesse! I want to hang a big sign around my neck, like Daddy's on the barn. Gone fishing. You don't like it here. Exactly. I meant here in my house. I know you did. You never should have moved back in with me. If you'd kept your own house or found a new place when Cecil left, you'd have made some new friends at least. Had your own things around you, give Ricky a place to come see you. You never should have come here. Maybe. But I didn't force you, did I? If it was a mistake, we made it together. You took me in. I appreciate that. Well, you didn't have any business being by yourself right then. But I can understand why you'd want a place of your own. You could be as close or as far away as you wanted. A grown Mama! Way. I'm just not having a very good time. And I don't have any reason to think it'll get anything but worse. I'm tired. I'm hurt. I'm sad. I feel used. Tired of what? It all. What does that mean? I can't say it any better. Well, you'll have to, because I'm not letting you alone until you do. What were those other things? Hurt? You had all this ready to say to me, didn't you? Did you write this down? How long have you been thinking about this? Off and on, ten years. On all the time since Christmas. What happened to Christmas? Nothing. So why Christmas? That's it. On the nose. See where all this is? Red Hot's up front, sour balls and horehound mixed together in this one sack, new packages of toffee and licorice right in back there. Go back to your list. You're hurt by what? Mom. Okay, sad about what? There's nothing real sad going on right now. If it was after your divorce, that would make sense. Now this drawer has everything in it that there's no better place for. Extension cords, batteries for the radio, extra lighters, masking tape, Elmer's glue, sandpaper, thumbtacks, that kind of stuff. The mouse traps are under the sink, but you call Dawson if you've got one and let him do it. Sad about what? The way things are. Uh, not good enough. What things? Oh, everything from you and me to Red China. <laughs> I think we can leave the Chinese out of this. There's extra light bulbs in a box in the hall closet. And we've got a couple packages of fuses in the fuse box. There's candles and matches in the top of the broom closet. But if the lights go out, just call Dawson and sit tight. But don't open the refrigerator door. Things will stay cool in there as long as you keep the door shut. I asked you a question. I read the paper. I don't like the way things are. And they're no better out there than they are in here. You're doing this because of the newspapers. I can sure fix that. There's just more of it on TV. Take it out then! You wouldn't do that. Watch me! What would you do all day? Sing? <laughs> I would too, Jesse. I'll sing till morning to keep you alive. Please. No. It's a funny idea, though. What do you sing? We've got a good life here. I called this morning and canceled the papers. Except for Sunday, for your puzzles, you'll still get that one. Let's get a new dog, Jesse. You liked the big dog, didn't you? That king dog, didn't you? I did like that king dog, yes. Oh, I'm so dumb. He's the one run under the tractor. That makes him dumb, not you. For bringing it up. It's okay. Candy wipes and sponges under the sink. We could get a new dog and keep him here in the house. Dogs are cheap. No. Something for you to take care of. I've had you, Mama. You do too much for me. I can fill pill bottles and change the shelf paper and wash the floors when I'm through. Just you watch me. You don't have to do a thing around here if you don't want to, Jesse. You don't have to take care of me. I know that. You've just been letting me do it, so I'll have something to do, haven't you? Well, 
I don't do it as well as you. I just meant if it tires you out or makes you feel used. Mama, I know you used to ride the bus. Riding the bus. And it's hot and bumpy and crowded and too noisy and more than anything in the world you want to get off. And the only reason in the world you don't get off is it's still 50 blocks from where you're going? Well, I can get off right now if I want to. Because even if I ride 50 more years and get off then, it's the same place when I step down to it. Whenever I feel like it, I can get off. As soon as I've had enough, it's my stop. I've had enough. You're feeling sorry for yourself. The plumber's helper is under the sink, too. You're not having a good time. Who ever promised you a good time? Do you think I've had a good time? I think you're pretty happy, yeah. You have things you like to do. Like what? Like knit. I'll teach you to knit. I couldn't do any of that nice work, Mama. Good time don't come looking for you, Jessie. You could work some puzzles or put in a garden or go to the store. <coughs> Let's call a taxi and go to the AP. I shopped you up for about two weeks already. You're not gonna need toilet paper till Thanksgiving. You're acting like some little brat, Jessie. You're mad and everybody's boring and you don't like me and you don't like going out and you don't like staying in and you never talk on the phone and you don't watch TV and you're miserable and it is your own sweet fault. And it's time I did something about it. Not something like killing yourself, something like Biden was all new dishes. I'd like that. Or maybe the doctor would let you get a driver's license now. Or, or I know what, let's do right this minute. Let's rearrange the furniture. I'll do that if you want. I always thought if the TV was somewhere else, you wouldn't get such a glare on it during the day. I'll do whatever you want before I go. You could get a job. I took that telephone sales job and I didn't even make enough money to pay the phone bill. And I tried to work at the gift shop at the hospital, and they said I made people real uncomfortable smiling at them the way I did. You could keep books. You kept your dad's books. Well, nobody ever checked them. When he died, they checked them. And that's when they took the books away from me. That's because without him, there wasn't any business. You know I couldn't work. I can't do anything. I've never been around people my whole life except when I went to the hospital. I could have a seizure any time. What good would a job do? The kind of job I could get would make me feel worse. Jessie. It's true. No, it's what you think is true. That's right. It's what I think is true. But I can't do anything about that. No, you can't. And I can't do anything either about my life to Change it, make it better, make me feel better about it. Like it better, make it work. But I can stop it, shut it down, turn it off like the radio when there's nothing on I wanna listen to. It's all I really have that belongs to me and I'm gonna say what happens to it. And it's gonna stop and I'm gonna stop it. So, let's just have a good time. Have a good time. We can't go on fussing all night. I mean, I could ask you things I always wanted to know. And you could make me hot chocolate, huh? the old way. That takes cocoa, Jessie. Does that mean I can't? I mean, of course, you can have a caramel apple. I thought I could. I make the best caramel apples in the world. I know you do. Or used to. You don't get cocoa like mine anywhere anymore. It takes time, I know, but... The salt is the trick. Trouble and everything. No trouble. It's no trouble. You put it in a pan and stir it up. All right, fine. Caramel apple, cocoa, okay.
Did you talk to Agnes today? She is calling me from a payphone. God only knows why. She's got a perfectly good trim line at home. Well, how is she? How is she every day, Jesse? Nuts. <laughs> is she really crazy or just silly? No, she's really crazy. She's probably using a payphone because she's got another little fire problem at home. Mother. Agnes Fletcher has burned down every house she's ever lived in. Eight fires and she's doing another one any day now. No. Wouldn't surprise me a bit. Oh, why didn't you tell me this before? Why isn't she locked up somewhere? Because nobody ever got hurt, I guess. Agnes woke everybody up to watch those fires as soon as she set them. <laughs> That's thoughtful, I guess. The houses they lived in, you knew they were going to fall down eventually, so why wait for it is all I could ever make out about it. Agnes likes a feeling of accomplishment. <laughs> Good for her. What are you asking about Agnes? One cup or two? One. She's your friend. No marshmallows. You have to have marshmallows, Jessie. That's the old way. Two or three. Three is better. Three then. Her whole house burns down? Her clothes and pillows and everything? I'm not sure I believe this. When she was a girl, Jess. Not now. But she's got it in her. I'm sure of it. She wouldn't burn her house down now. Where would she go? She can't get Buster to build her a new one. He's dead. How could she burn it up? Be exciting as she did, though. You never know. You do too now, Mama. She wouldn't do it. I guess not. What else? Why does she wear all those whistles around her neck? Why does she have a house full of birds? I didn't know she had a house full of birds. Well, she does. And she says they just follow her home. Well, I know for a fact that she's still paying on the last pair that she bought. You gotta keep your life filled up, she says. She says a lot of stupid things. <laughs> it's all that okra she eats. You can't just willy-nilly eat okra two meals a day and expect to get away with it. it made her crazy. She really eats okra twice a day? Where does she get it in the winter? Well, she eats it a lot. Maybe not two meals, but more than the average person. I don't know how much Oprah the average person is. <laughs> Do you know how much Oprah Agnes eats? No. How many birds does she have? Two. Then what are the whistles for? They're not real whistles. They're just little plastic ones she wears on a necklace that she won playing bingo. And I only told you about it because I thought I might get a laugh out of you for once even if it wasn't the truth. Things don't have to be true for you to talk about them, you know. <laughs> Why won't she come over here? Well, now, what a good idea. We should have had more cocoa. Cocoa is perfect. Except you don't like milk. Ugh, I hate milk. Cut your throat as bad as okra. Something just downright disgusting about it. It's because of me, isn't it? No, Jessie. Yes, Mama. Okay, yes. But she's crazy. She's as crazy as they come. She's a lunatic. What is it exactly? Did I say something sometime? Or did she see me have a fit and is afraid I'll have another one if she comes over here? Or what? I guess. You guess what? What she ever said, she must have given you some reason. Your hands are cold. What difference does that make? Like a corpse, she says, and I'm going to be one soon enough as it is. That's crazy. <laughs> That's Agnes. Jesse shook my hand to death, and I can't take a chance it's catching, Thelma, so I ain't coming over. And you can believe me or not, but I ain't coming. I'll come up the driveway, but that's as far as I'll go. <laughs>
could make her come over here, Jesse. I could call her up right now. She could bring the birds and come visit. I didn't know you ever thought about her at all. I'll call her up and she'll come all right. She owes me one. No, that's all right. I just wondered about it. When I'm in the hospital, does she come over here? Well, her kitchen's just a tiny thing. When she comes over here, she feels like we all like to change the scene, don't we? Sure we do. Plus, there's no birds driving around. Oh, I hate those birds. She says I just don't understand them. What's there to understand about birds? <laughs> Why Agnes likes them, for one thing. Why they stay with her when they could be outside with the other birds. How much water they need. What their singing means. How they fly. What they think Agnes is. Why do you have to know so much about things, Jessie? There's just not that much to things that I could ever see. That you could ever tell, you mean. You didn't have to lie to me about Agnes. I didn't lie. You never asked before. You lied about setting fire to all those houses, and about how many birds she has, and how much okra she eats, and why she won't come over here. If I have to keep dragging the truth out of you, this is going to take all night. Well, that's fine with me. I'm not a bit sleepy. Mom. All right. Ask me whatever you want. Here. Did you love Daddy? No. <laughs> I didn't think so. Were you really 15 when you married him? The way he told it? I'm sitting in the mud. He comes along, drags me in the kitchen. She's been there ever since. Yes. <laughs> no. It was a big fat lie, the whole thing. He just thought it was funnier that way. God, it's milk in here. The cocoa helps. Not enough, though, does it? You can still taste it. Yeah, it's pretty bad. I thought it was my memory that was bad, but it's the milk, all right. It's a real waste of chocolate. Uh, uh, you don't have to finish it. Thanks, so. though. I should have known not to make it. I knew you wouldn't like it. You never did like it. You didn't ever love him, or he did something and you stopped loving him, or what? He felt sorry for me. He wanted a plain country woman, and that's what he got. And then he held it against me for the rest of my life, like I was supposed to change and surprise him somehow. Like, I remember this one day, he was standing out on the porch, and I told him to go in and get a shirt on. And he went in, got one, and then he said, real peaceful, to the point. You're right, Thelma. If God had meant for people to walk around without any clothes on, they'd have been born that way. He didn't mean anything by that, Mama. He never said a word he didn't have to, Jesse. That was probably all he'd said to me all day, Jesse. So if he said it, there was something to it. But I never did figure that one out. What did that mean? I don't know. I liked him better than you did, but I didn't know him any better. How could I love him, Jesse? I didn't have a thing he wanted. He got his fair share, though. You loved him enough for the both of us. He used to follow him around like some... Jesse, all that man ever did was farm and sit and try to think of somebody to sell the farm to. Or make me a boyfriend out of pipe cleaners and sit back and smile like the stick man was going to dance and wasn't I going to get a kick out of that? <laughs> or sit up with a sick cow all night and leave me a chain of sleepy stick elephants on my bed in the morning. Or just sit. I liked him sitting. Big old faded blue man in the chair. Quiet. Agnes gets more talk out of her birds than I got out of the two of you. He could have had that gone fish inside around his neck in that chair. I watched him stare off across the water. 
I saw him look at the weather rolling in. I got to where I could practically see the boat myself. But you, you knew what he was thinking, and you're going to tell me. I don't know, Mama. His life, I guess. His corn, his boots, us, things, you know. No, I don't know, Jesse. You have those quiet conversations after supper every night. Who were you two whispering about? We weren't whispering. We were just across the room. What did you talk about? We talked about why black socks are warmer than blue socks. Is that something to go tell Mother? You were just jealous because I'd rather talk to him than wash the dishes with you. I was jealous because you'd rather talk to him than anything. If I had died instead of him, he wouldn't have taken you in like I did. I wouldn't have expected him to. Then what would you have done? Come visit. Oh, I see. He died and left you stuck with me, and you're mad about it. He weren't. He didn't mean to. I didn't have to come here. We've been through this. Or maybe you think if I had loved him more, or at all, he'd still be alive. I never thought that. He felt sorry for you, too. Don't kid yourself about that. He said you were a runt, and he said it from the day you were born, and he said you didn't have a chance. I know he loved me. What if he did? It didn't change anything. It didn't have to. I miss him. He never really went fishing, you know. Never once. His tackle box was full of chewing tobacco, and he'd just drive out to the lake and sit in his car. Dawson told me, and Benny at the bait shop told him. He'd come back from fishing, and all he'd have to show for it was a whole pipe cleaner family. Chickens, pigs, a dog with a bad leg. It was creepy strange. Made me sick to look at him, and I hid his pipe cleaners a couple of times, but he always had more somewhere. You get interested in things, breathe better, change somehow. Into what? The queen? A clerk in a shoe store? Why should I? Because he said to? Because you said to? <laughs> well, I wasn't here for his entertainment and I'm not here for yours. I don't know what I'm here for, but then I don't think about it. But I guess you wouldn't be killing yourself if we were still alive. Oh, that's a fine thing to figure out, isn't it? That's not true. Oh, no? Then what were you asking about him for? Why did you want to know if I loved him? I didn't think you did, that's all. All right, fine. You were right. You feel better? It feels good to be right about it. It didn't matter whether I loved him. It didn't matter to him, and it didn't matter to me. And it didn't mean we didn't get along. It wasn't important. We didn't talk about it. Take all these pots out to the porch. One pan. Get me one knife, one fork, one big spoon, and the can of it. And put them out where I can get to them. Don't do that. I just straightened that drawer. Take out all the plates and cups. I'll use paper. Loretta can have what she wants and Dawson can sell the rest. What are you doing? I'm not going to cook. I never liked it anyway. I like candy. Wrapped in plastic or coming in sacks. And tuna. I like tuna. I like tuna, thank you. What if you want to make apple butter? You can't make apple butter in that little pan. What if you leave carrots on cooking and burn I don't apple? like carrots. What if the strawberries are good this year and you want to go picking with Agnes? I'll tell her to bring a pan. You said you would do whatever I want. Well, I don't want a bunch of pots cluttering up my cabinets that I can't get down to anyway. Throw them out, every last one. I'm putting them all back in. I'm not taking them to the porch. If you want them, they'll be there. You'll bend down and get them like you got the one for the cocoa. And if somebody else comes over here to cook, they'll have something to cook in, and that's the end of it. So who's gonna come over here and cook? Agnes. In my pots? Not on your life. There's no reason why the two of you couldn't just live here together. Be cheaper for both of you and somebody to talk to. And if the birds bothered you, well, one day when Agnes is out getting her hair done, you can take them off for a walk. So that's why you're testing me about Agnes. You think you can rest easy if you get me a new babysitter? Well, I don't want to live with Agnes. I barely want to talk with Agnes. 
She's just around. We go back, that's all. I'm not letting Agnes near this place. You don't get off as easy as that child. Okay then, just something to think about. I don't like to think about things. I like for things to go on. I want to know what Daddy said to you the night he died. You came storming out of his room and said I could wait it out with him if I wanted to, but you were gonna watch gun smoke. What did he say to you? He didn't say anything. That's why I left. He didn't have a word to say to me. It was his last chance not to talk to me and he took full advantage of it. I'm sorry you didn't love him. Sorry for you, honey. He seemed like a nice man. Ready for your apple now? As soon as I'm through here, Mama. Won't like the apple either. It'll be just like the cocoa. You never liked eating any of it. What have you been living on all these years? Toothpaste? Now, you know the milkman comes on Wednesdays and Saturdays and he leaves the order blank in an egg box and you give the bills to Dawson once a month. Do they still make that orange egg? It's not orange egg, it's just orange. I'm gonna get some. I thought they stopped making it. You stopped ordering it. You should drink milk. Not anymore, I'm not. That cocoa was the last of it. Hooray. I told them to keep delivering a quart a week no matter what you said. I told them you'd run out of Cokes and you'd have to drink it. I told them I knew you wouldn't pour And you the told them you weren't going to be ordering anymore? I told them I was taking a little holiday and to look after you. And they didn't think something was funny about that? You, who never goes to the front steps? You, who only sees the driveway looking down from a stretcher, passed out cold? They said it was about time, but why didn't I take you with me? And I said, I didn't think you'd want to go. And they said, yeah, everybody's got their own idea of vacation. I guess you thought that was funny. You know, there never was any reason to call the ambulance for me. All they ever did for me in the emergency room was let me wake up. I could have done that here. Now, I'll just call them out and you say yes or no. I know you like pickles. Ketchup? Keep it. We've had this since last 4th of July. Keep the ketchup, keep it all. Are you going to drink ketchup from the bottle or what? How can you want your food and not want your pots to cook it in? This stuff will all spoil in here, Mother. Nothing I ever did was good enough for you, and I want to know why. That's not true. And I want to know why you've lived here this long feeling the way you do. You have no earthly idea how I feel. Well, how could I, Jessie? You're real far back there. Back where? What's it like back there where you are? Do people always say the right thing or get what they want or what? What are you talking about? Why don't you read the newspaper? Why don't you wear that sweater I made for you? Do you remember what I used to look like or am I just any old woman to you now? When you have a fit, do you see stars or what? How did you fall off the horse really? Why did Cecil leave you? Where did you put my old glasses? You're in an old milk of magnesia box in the bottom drawer of your dresser. Cecil left me because he made me choose between him and smoking. Jesse, I know he wasn't that dumb. I never understood why he hated it so much when it's so good. Smoking is the only thing I know that's always just what you think it's going to be. Just like it was the last time and right there when you want it and was real quiet. Your fits made him sick and you know it. Say seizures, not fits. It's the seizures. same thing. A seizure in the hospital is a fit at home. They didn't bother him at all. except he did feel responsible for it. It was his idea to go horseback riding that day. It was his idea I could do anything if I just made up my mind to. I fell off the horse because I didn't know how to hold on. Cecil left for pretty much the same reason. He had a girl, Jesse. I walked right in on him in the tool shed. Okay. That's fair.
Was she very pretty? <laughs> it was Agnes's girl, Carlene. Judge for yourself. I guess you and Agnes had a good talk about that, huh? I never thought he was good enough for you. They moved here from Tennessee, you know. What are you talking about? You liked him better than I did. You flirted him out here to build your porch, or I'd never even met him at all. You thought he'd help you out around the place, come in and get some coffee and talk to you? God knows what you thought. All that curly hair. He was the best carpenter I ever saw. That little house of yours will still be standing at the end of the world, Jesse. You didn't need a porch, Mama. All right, I wanted you to have a husband. And I couldn't get one on my own, of course. How were you going to get a husband, never opening your mouth to a living soul? So I was quiet about it, so what? So I should have just let you sit here? Sit like your daddy? Sit here? Maybe. Well, I didn't think so. Well, what did you know? I never said I knew much. How was I supposed to learn anything living out here? I didn't know enough to do half the things I did in my life. Things happen, you do what you can about them, and you see what happens next. I married you off to the wrong man. I admit that. So I took you in when he left. I'm sorry. He wasn't the wrong man. He didn't love you, Jesse, or he wouldn't have left. He wasn't the wrong man, Mama. I loved Cecil so much. And I tried to get more exercise. And I tried to stay awake. Tried to learn to ride a horse. And I, and I tried to stay outside with him. But he always knew I was trying, so it didn't work. He was a selfish man. He told me once he hated to see people move into the houses after he built them. He knew they'd mess them up. I loved that bridge he built over the creek in back of the house. I told him it didn't have to be anything special, but he used that yellow pine and rubbed it so smooth. He had responsibilities here. He had a wife and a son, and he failed you. For that baby bed he built for Ricky? I told him he didn't have to spend so much time on it, but he said it had to last, and the thing ended up weighing 200 pounds, and I couldn't move it. <laughs> I said, how long did a baby bed have to last anyway? But maybe he thought if it was strong enough, it might keep Ricky a baby. Ricky is too much like Cecil. He is not. Ricky is as much like me as it's possible for any human to be. We even wear the same size pants. These are his, I think. It's just the same size. That's not the same person. I see it in his face. I hear it when he talks. We look out at the world and we see the same thing. Not fair. And the only difference between us is Ricky's out there trying to get even. And he knows not to trust anybody, and he got that straight from me. And he knows not to try to get work, and guess where he got that? And he walks around like there's loose boards in the floor, and you know who laid that floor. I did. Ricky's not through yet. You don't know how he'll turn out. Yes, I do, and so did Cecil. Ricky is the two of us together for all time and too small a space, and we are tearing each other apart inside that boy, like always, and if you don't see that, then you're just blind. Ricky just needs some time. Oh, sweetheart. he'll have plenty of that. Five years for forgery, ten years Stop for- Stop that! Cecil might be ready to try it again. That happens sometimes. Go downtown, find him, talk to him. He didn't know what he had in you. But you won't know until you talk to him or, or call him up right now. He might be home. And say what? 
Nothing's changed, Cecil. I'd just like to look at you if you don't mind. No. He loved me, Mama. He just didn't know how things fall down around me like they do. I think he did the right thing. He gave himself another chance, that's all. to take me with him. I did tell him I would leave you and Ricky and everything I loved out here if only he would take me with him. But he couldn't and I understand that. I wrote that note I showed you. I wrote it, not Cecil. I said, I'm sorry, Jess, I can't fix it all for you. I said I'd always love me, not Cecil. But that's how he felt. Then he should have taken you with him. Mama, you don't pack your garbage when you move. You will not call yourself garbage, Jesse. Just the way of saying it. Thinking about my list, that's all. Well, a little more than that. I'm trying to say it's all right that Cecil left. It was a relief in a way. I never was what he wanted to see. So it was better when he wasn't looking at me all the time. I'll make your apple man. Oh, no thanks. You get the manicure stuff and I'll be right there. Jesse, I think your dad had little garbage night is Tuesday. Put it out as late as you can. The Davis dogs get in it if you don't. And keep ordering the heavy black bags. He doesn't pay to buy the cheap ones. And I've got all the ties in here with the hammers and all. Take them out of the box as soon as you open a new one and put them in this drawer. They'll get lost if you don't and rubber bands or something else won't work. I think your daddy had this too. I think he sat in his chair and had little fits. I read this in a magazine a long time ago, how little fits go, just little blackouts where maybe their eyes don't even close, and people just call them thinking spells. I don't think you want this manicure we've been looking forward to. I, I watched this cover for the sofa, but it'll take both of us to get it back on. I watched his eyes. I know that's what it was. The magazine said some people don't even know they've had one. Daddy would have known if he'd had fits, Mama. The lady in this story, she kept track of her fits, and she had 80,000 of them in the last 11 days, 11 years. The next time you wash this cover, it'll dry better if you put it on wet. Jesse, listen to what I'm telling you. This lady, she had anywhere between five and 500 fits a day, so that they lasted maybe 15 seconds a piece, and out of her life- Talk about fits, is that it? Yes, I do. I want to Most of the time, I wouldn't even know I had one, except I wake up wearing different clothes, feeling like I've been run over. Sometimes I feel my head start to turn around or hear myself scream. And sometimes there is this dizzy, stupid feeling a little before it, but if the TV's on, well, it's easy to miss. I can tell when you're about to have one. Your eyes get this big. But just What do they look like, the seizures? Different each time, Jess. Okay. Big one, then. A good one. I think I want to know now. Well, you just sort of crumple in a heap, like a puppet and somebody cut your strings all at once. O or like a firing squad in a Mexican movie. You just slide down the wall, you know? You don't know what happens? How could you not know what happens? I'm busy. That's not funny. I'm not laughing. 
My head turns around and I fall down and then what? Well, you, your chest squeezes in and out and you sound like you're gagging, sucking air in and out like you can't breathe. Do it for me. Make a sound for me. Oh, I will not. It is awful sounding. Yeah, I felt like it might be. What's next? Uh, your mouth bites down and I have to get your tongue out of the way fast before you bite yourself. Or you. I bite you too, don't I? You got me good once. I had to get a tetanus. But I know what to look for now. Then you turn blue and the jerks start up. Uh, like I'm standing there poking you with a cattle prod or you're sticking your finger in a light socket as fast as you can. Foaming like a mad dog the whole time. It's bubbling, Jess. Not foam like washer overflow, for God's sakes. Bubbling like a baby spit up. I get a wet washcloth, that's all. Then you, the jerk slow down and you wet yourself and it's over. Two minutes, tops. How do I get to the bed? How do you think? I'm too heavy for you now, how do you do it? I call Dawson, but I get you cleaned up before he gets here and I make him leave before you wake up. You could just leave me on the floor. I want you to wake up someplace nice, okay? But. Jesse, this is the reason I even brought it up. You haven't had a seizure for a solid year. Do you realize that? A whole year. Yeah. The Theobard's about right now, I guess. You bet it is. You might be through with it for all time. You might never have another one. Could be. You are. I know you are. I sure am feeling good. I really am. The double vision's gone and my gums aren't swelling. No rashes or anything. I'm feeling as good as I ever felt in my life. I'm even feeling like worrying or getting mad, and I'm not scared it'll start a fit if I do. I just go ahead. Of course you do. You can even yell at me if you want. I can take it. You don't have to act like you're just visiting here. This is your house, too. The best part is my memory's back. Your memory's always been good. When couldn't you remember things? You're always reminding me what... Because I've made lists for everything. But now I remember what things mean on my list. I see dish towels and I used to wonder whether I was supposed to wash them, buy them, or look for them because I wouldn't remember what I did with them after I washed them. But now I know it means wrap them up. They're a present for the writer's birthday. You used to go looking for your list too. I've noticed that. You always know where they are now. Loretta's birthday isn't coming up, is it? I made a list of all the birthdays for you. I even put yours on it. So you can call Loretta and remind her. Uh, let's take Loretta to Howard Johnson's this year for those fried clams. I know you love that clam roll. I won't be here, Mama. What have we just been talking about? You'll be here. You're well, Jesse. The fits are over. You said it yourself. You're starting over. You're remembering I things. I won't be here. If I had a year like this to think straight and all before now, I'd be gone already. No, Jesse. Yes, Mama. Once I started remembering things, I could see what it all added up to. The fits are over. It's not the fits, Mama. Then it's me for giving them to you, but I didn't do it. It's not the fits. You said it yourself. The medicine takes care of the fits. Your daddy gave you those fits. He passed them down to you like your green eyes and your straight hair. It's his fault. So what if he had little fits? It's not inheriting. I fell off the horse. It was an accident. The horse wasn't the first time, Jesse. You had a fit when you were five years old. I did not. You did. You were eating a popsicle and down you went. He gave them to you. It's his fault, not mine. Well, you took your time telling me. How do you tell that to a five-year-old? What did the doctor say? He said there wasn't anything to do but wait for another one. He said kids have them all the time. But I didn't have another one. You mean to tell me I had fits all the time as a kid? And you just told me I fell down or something? And it wasn't till I had the fit when Cecil was looking, that anybody bothered to find out what was wrong it with me? It wasn't all the time, and they changed when you got to school.
school, more like your dad's. Oh, that was some swell time sitting here with the two of you turning on and off like light bulbs some nights. How many fits did I have? You never hurt yourself. I never let you out of my sight. I caught you every time. But you didn't tell anybody. It was none of their business. You were ashamed. I didn't think anybody should know, least of all you. Least of all me. All oh, right. That was mine to know, Mama, not yours. Did Daddy know? He thought you were. You fell down a lot. He thought you were careless. Maybe he thought I beat you. I don't know what he thought. He didn't think about it. Because you didn't tell him. If I told him about you, I'd have to tell him about him. I don't like this. I don't like this one bit. I didn't think you'd like it. That's why I didn't tell you. If I'd known I was an epileptic, Mama, I wouldn't have ridden any horses. You make you feel like a freak then. Is that what I should have done? Just get the manicure tray and sit down. I don't want a manicure. Doesn't look like you do. No. Maybe I did drop you. You don't know. If you say you didn't, you didn't. Maybe I didn't feed you the right thing. Maybe you had a fever sometime and I didn't know it soon enough. Maybe it's punishment. For what? I don't know. Because of the way I felt about your father. Because I didn't eat right or I smoked too much when I was carrying you. I don't know what I did, but I did it. It's just a sickness, not a curse. Epilepsy doesn't mean anything, it just I'm is. I'm not talking about the fits here, Jesse. I'm talking about this killing yourself. It has to be me that's the matter here, or you wouldn't be doing it. I didn't tell you things, or I married you off to the wrong man, or I took you in and let your life get away from you, or all of it put together. I don't know what I did, but I did it. I know, but I don't know what to do about it now. It doesn't have anything to do with you! Everything you do has to do with me! You can't wash your face or cut your finger without doing it to me. That's right. You might as well kill me as kill you, Jesse. It's the same thing. This has to do with me. What if it does? What if it has everything to do with you? What if you are all I have and you're not enough? What if I can take all the rest of it if only I didn't have you? What if the only way I can get away from you is to kill myself? I can still do it! Don't leave me, Jesse. no! I've got a box of things I want people to have. I'm just gonna go get it for you. You just rest in it. Jesse, how am I supposed to live here without you? I need you. You're supposed to tell me to stand up straight and say how nice I look in my pink dress and drink my milk. You're supposed to lock up every night so I know we're safe. And when I wake up in the morning, you're supposed to be out there making the coffee and watching me get older every day. And you're supposed to help me die when the child comes. I can't do that by myself. I'm not like you. I hate the quiet. How am I? How am I supposed to go on knowing that you had to kill yourself to make it stop hurting and then you gave me this one chance to make it better? 
to convince you to stay alive and I couldn't do it. How am I supposed to live with myself after this? I only told you so I could explain it. So you wouldn't blame yourself, so you wouldn't feel bad. There was never anything you could say to make me change my mind. I didn't want you to save me. I just wanted you to know. Just give it a little more time. Just a few more years. I don't have that many more to go. When I'm gone, you do whatever you want. Maybe with me gone, you'll have all the quiet you want right here in the house. And you can plant some begonias up the walk and get just the right rain for them all summer. And by then, Ricky will be married. And he'll bring your grandbabies over and you can sneak them a piece of candy when their daddy's not looking. And then be real glad when they've gone home and left you to your quiet again. Don't you see, Mama? Everything I do winds up like this. How could I think you would understand? How could I think you would want a manicure? We could hold hands for an hour and then I could go shoot myself. I'm sorry about tonight, Mama. But it's exactly why I'm doing it. If you got the guts to, to kill yourself, You've got the guts to stay alive. I know that. So it's really just a matter of where I'd rather be. Look, maybe I can't think of it, but that doesn't mean there isn't something that would help. You find it. You think of it. You can keep trying. You can get brave and try some more. You don't have to give up. I'm not giving up! This is the other thing I'm trying. And I'm sure there are some other things that might work, but my work isn't good enough anymore. I need something that will work. This will work. That's why I picked it. But something might happen. Something that could change everything. Who knows what it might be, but it might be worth waiting for. Give it two more weeks. We can have more talks like tonight. No, Mama. I'll pay more attention to you. I'll tell the truth when you ask. I'll let you have your No, say. Mama! We wouldn't have more talks like tonight. Because it's this next part that's made this last part so good, Mama. No. This is how I have my say. This is how I say what I thought about it all. And I say no. To Dawson and Loretta and the Red Chinese and Epilepsy and Ricky and Cecil and you. And me. And hope. I say no. Just let me go easy, Mama. How can I let you go? You can because you have to. It's what you've always done. You are my child. I'm what became of your child. this old baby picture of me. And it was somebody else. Not me. It was somebody pink and fat who never heard of sick or lonely. Who cried and got fed and reached up and got held and kicked but never hurt anybody. And slept when ever she wanted to, just by closing her eyes. Somebody who mainly just laid there and laughed at the colors waving around over her head and chewed on a polka dot way and woke up knowing some
new trick nearly every day. You rolled over and drooled on the sheet. I felt your hand pulling my quilt back up over you. That's who I started out. And this is who is left. tried to be and never got there. Somebody I waited for who never came and never will. So see, it doesn't much matter what happens in the world or in this house even. I'm what was worth waiting for. And I didn't make it. Me. Who might have made a difference to me? show up. So there's no reason to stay. Except to keep you company. And that's not reason enough. Because I'm not very good company, am I? <laughs> no. And neither am I. time comes. I know it's coming. But you don't know when the scary movie. Yeah. Like some killer on the loose hiding out in the backyard just waiting for me to have my hands full someday. And how am I supposed to protect myself when I don't know what he looks like or how he sounds coming up behind me like that or if it will hurt or take very long or what I don't get done before it happens. You've got plenty of time left. I forget what for right now. Well, whatever happens, I don't know. For the rest of your life. For Agnes burning down one more house. <laughs> or Dawson losing his hair. Jesse, I can't just sit here and say, okay, kill yourself if you want to. Sure you can. You just did. Say it again. Jesse. How dare you? How dare you? You think you can just leave here whenever you want like you're watching television or something? No, you can't. You make me feel like a fool for being a live child and you are so wrong. I like it here and I will stay here until they make me go. Until they drag me screaming and I mean screeching into my grave. And you're real smart to get away before them because honey, You've never heard noise like that before in your life. Who am I talking to? You're gone already. I'm looking right through you. I can't save you because you're already gone. I guess you think they'll all have to talk about you now. Oh yes, this will really confuse them. You've been laughing to yourself since Christmas. Boy, aren't they all in for a surprise. Well, nobody's gonna be a bit surprised, sweetheart. This is just like you. Do it the hard way, that's my girl. You know who they're gonna feel sorry for? Me, that's right, not you, me. They're gonna be ashamed of you. Oh yes, ashamed. If anybody asks Dawson about it, he'll change the subject as fast as he can. He'll say how much he has to pay to park his car these days. Leave me alone. It's the trash. I should have just left you a note. Yes. No. No. I might not have 
thought of all the things you said. It's okay, Mom. Remember, you liked that preacher that your dad is. So if you want to ask him to do the service, that's okay with me. What? And pick some songs you like. Or let Agnes pick. She'll know exactly which ones. Oh, and I had your dress clean that you wore to Dad's. You look real nice in that. I don't remember, hon. And it won't be so bad once your friends start coming to the funeral home. You'll probably see people you haven't seen for years. But I thought about what you should say to get you over that nervous part when they first come in. Come in. Take them to see their flowers. They'd like that. And when they say, I'm so sorry, Thelma, you just say, I appreciate your coming, Connie. And then ask them how their garden was this summer or what they're doing for Thanksgiving or how their children are doing? I don't think I should ask them about their children. I'll talk about what they have on. That's always good. And I'll have some knitting with me. And Agnes will be there. So you might not have to talk at all. Maybe if Connie Richards does come, I can get her to tell me where she gets that Irish yarn, she calls it. I know it doesn't come from Ireland. I think it just has a green wrapper. And make sure you invite enough people back afterward to get enough food to feed them and have some left for you. But don't let anybody take anything home, especially Loretta. Loretta will help get all the food set up, honey. It's only fair to let her have some macaroni or something. No, Mama. You have to be more selfish. Now, somebody's bound to ask you why I did it. And you just say you don't know. That you loved me. And you know I loved you. And we just sat around tonight, like every other night of our lives. And then I came over and kissed you and said, Night, Mother. And you heard me close my bedroom door. And the next thing you heard was the shot. Whatever reasons I have. Well, you guess I just took them with me. It was personal. Good. That's good, Mom. That's what I'll say to you. Personal. Yeah. Is that what I tell Dawson and Loretta, too? We sat around, you kissed me. Night, Mother. They're not going to believe it, honey. They're going to want to know more. Well, then, tell them what we did. I filled up the candy jars, I cleaned out the refrigerator, we made some hot chocolate and put the cover back on the sofa. You had no idea, all right? I really think it's better this way. If they know we talked about it, they really won't understand how you let me go. It's private. Tonight is private, yours and mine. And I don't want anybody else to have any of it. Okay? Now, I don't want you to come in when you hear the shot. First of all, you won't be able to get in by yourself, but I don't want you trying. Call Dawson, then call the police, and then call Agnes. And then you'll need something to do until somebody gets here, so wash the hot chocolate paper. You wash that pan till you hear the doorbell ring, and I don't care if it's an hour. You keep washing that pan. I'll make my calls, and then I'll just sit. I won't need anything to do. What will the police say? They'll do that gunpowder test and ask you what happened. And by that time, the ambulance will be here, and they'll come in and get me. And you know how that goes. You stay out here with Dawson and Loretta. 
You keep Dawson out here. I want the police in the room first, not Dawson, okay? What if Dawson and Loretta want me to go home with them? That's up to you. I don't think I will. All they've got is Sanka. Maybe Agnes could come stay with you for a few days. I want to be by myself, I think. You want me to get those things to people? I want Loretta to have my little calculator. Dawson bought it for himself, you know, but then he saw one he liked better, and he couldn't bring both of them home with Loretta counting every penny the way she does. So he gave the first one to me. <laughs> be funny for her to have it now, don't you think? And all my slippers are in a sack for her in my closet. Tell her I know they'll fit, and I've never worn any of them, and make sure Dawson hears you tell her that. I'm glad he loves Loretta so much, but I wish he knew not everybody has her size feet. <laughs> okay. Now, this letter is for Dawson, but it's mostly about you, so read it if you want. There's a list of presents for you for at least 20 more birthdays and Christmases. So if you want anything special, you better add it to that list before you give it to them. Or if you want to be surprised, just don't read that page. This Christmas, you're getting mostly stuff in the house, like a new rug for your bathroom and needlework. But next Christmas, you're really going to cost him next Christmas. You'd never think of it, and I think you'd like it a lot. And you think he'll go for it? I think he'll feel like a real jerk if he doesn't. Me telling him to like this and all. Now, this number is where you call Cecil. I called it last week and he answered, so I know he still lives there. What do you want me to tell him? Tell him we talked about him and I only had good things to say. But mainly, tell him to find Ricky and tell him what I did. And tell Ricky you have something for him out here from me and to come get it. What is it? My watch. He'll sell it. That's the idea. I appreciate him not stealing it already. I'd like to buy him a good meal. No, buy dope. Well then, Mama, I hope he gets some good dope. And the rest of this is for you. When did you do all of this? During my naps, I guess. I guess. I tried to be quiet about it. Those are just little gifts for whenever you need one. They're not bought presents, just things I thought we might like to look at. Uh, photos, things you think you've lost, things you didn't know you had even. You'll see. I don't think I want them. They'll make me think of you. No, they won't. They're just things. Like a chuba toothpaste I found hanging on the door one day. Oh. Okay, then. Well, maybe there's one nice present in there. It's Granny's ring she gave me. I thought you might like to have it, but I didn't think you'd wear it if I gave it to you right now. No. Probably not. <laughs> No, Jesse. You've got all night. No, no. No, you can't. I won't let you. Let go of me, Mama. You didn't say it would be so soon. You can't go. I, I'm scared. I love you. Let go of me. I've said everything I have to say. You said you wanted to do my nails. I can't. It's too late. It's not too late. I don't want you to wake Dawson and Loretta when you call. I want them to still be up and dressed so they can get right over them. They get, they get up fast if they have to. Jesse, they don't matter here. You do. I do. We still have a lot of things to do here. You, you didn't tell me where my prescriptions are, what I tell Dr. Davis when he calls, or how much you want me to tell Ricky, or who I call to rake the leaves. Don't try and stop me, Mama. You can't do it. I can too. I'll stand in front of this hallway and you can't get past me. You'll have to knock me down to get through me, Jesse. I am not about to let you. Oh, 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 oh no. Oh, Jesse, no, Jesse, Jesse, please, 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 no, no.
only way you can make sure I do what you want is to come out here and make me Jesse. Jesse! Oh, I didn't know. I was here all the time. How could I know you were so alone? Jesse, stop this. Jesse, please. Loretta, let me talk to Dawson, honey. <laughs> 